It's been a long series. Back in 1894, the first time they met, the Longhorns have a huge lead, but AM1 has dominated in recent years, and the last time it was 2013 over in College Station. Sophomore Bucky Richardson, a very good runner, is the quarterback. Freshman Robert Wilson, the fullback. Exciting sophomore Darren Lewis, the tailback. We have a flag, by the way. Senior Rod Harris had split on A&M's number one receiver with sophomore Gary Oliver at flanker. The tight end junior Brian Ross. At center is sophomore Mike Arthur. Richmond Webb at left guard with one of the nation's best, senior Jerry Fontenot on the right side. The tackles are L.B. Moon and huge sophomore Matt McCall. All 6'7", 295 of it. Clipping. On the run back. the Texas defense. Veteran tackles Roger Fritcher and Warren Bolden. That's been an injury-destroyed position for the Longhorns. The ends are sophomores Mark Steed and Oscar Giles. Record-setting tackler Britt Hager starts at middle linebacker. Senior Lee Brockman and strong side linebacker. Junior Bobby Rhodes at the weak side. Redshirt freshman at the corners playing with injury was supposed to be Willie Matt Garza. Iris Lewis has replaced him. Mark Berry is on the other side. The safeties in that young secondary Paul Bierman and Stanley Richard. Out to the right side and nothing doing for Robert Wilson. You catch that. They go with the deep give to Darren Lewis on third and nine, and the Aggies are stuck by the Longhorns on their first possession. 23 for Texas. That is Samuels, the fullback. He's back there along with Eric Metcalf. It'll go to Samuels, and the Longhorns will have good field position, even though there's no return on the putt. Longhorns, offensively, quarterback, redshirt freshman Mark Murdoch, he's in. Senior Shannon Kelly is out. Durable senior Darren Norris at fullback. Game breaker Eric Metcalf, the senior at tailback. Speed burner Tony Jones, a junior. Sophomore Johnny Walker, the wide receivers. Big Stephen Clark, the tight end. Four-year regular Alan Champagne at center. Sophomore Dwayne Miller, senior Omar Salee, the guards. Sophomores at tackle Charles Cephas and Stan Thomas. Fence. Freshman John Martin replaces the injured O'Neal Gilbert at nose guard. Senior Leon Cole, junior Terry Price are the ends. The story of this defense, the Blip Blitz brothers, Roper and Wallace. Excellent seniors Adam Bob and Dana Batiste, the inside backers. Alex Norris and Mickey Washington at the corners. William Thomas, strong safety. Gary Jones is the free safety. Time, it's third and long like it was for a &M. Field. Darren Norris catching it and Dana Batiste, one of the more outspoken Aggies over the last couple of weeks. And he little option. There is the pitch of the deep man Lewis. The ball is on the ground. It's out on the near side, and the Aggies will keep it as it squirts to the 28. Britt Hager all over the ball carrier. A couple of years ago, it's third and six. Option again. This is Lewis. First down. He might go. One man to stop him, and he's inside the 45. Mark Berry, the right cornerback, was the last man between him and six points. It's a 27-yard game. To the offensive right, they're going to go the other way with the option. They get the immediate force, but here you see the beauty. They did not have enough defensive people on that side. They were short there, and Lewis, with the great speed in the open field, breaks it. Now, they depend on Britt Hager to get out there. He waited just a little bit too long. He secondary, probably the free and strong safeties on that play. Rod Harris motion near side. He's in the pattern. It's out his way. He's inside the 20. Rod Harris against Stanley Richard, the free safety. And that run on first down. Stanley Richard is caught in man-to-man -man coverage. Now, Bucky, not a tremendous passer, but over the last three or four games, about 50%. He puts this one on the numbers to Rod Harris. Richard, no match for him. Big gain. Darren Lewis inside the 10 and to the corner. And AM has the lead. Beerman, the safety for Texas, take a bad angle. Number 22, see him caught inside and blocked at the corner. Nobody to slow down Lewis. Lewis questionable as to whether or not he in the end zone from that angle doesn't look like it. The A&M Aggies on top by a score of 7-0. And... Jeep Cherry. Billy the alley 
Wilson, the fullback, number 32, sitting outside for AM. Bierman gets caught inside, blocked. And as you can see, Lewis, 25, has a clear field to the goal line. Give him three or four or five yards, but don't give him the touchdown. The scoring drive took a little more than a minute and a half. Some big plays in there, some by the air, some on the ground. A half dozen plays to go 70. This is Metcalf held on initially. Metcalf. Three yards or so. William Thomas out there with him, along with the right end, Terry Price, and the outside linebacker, Aaron Wallace, trying to. <laughs> Nothing there. Dana Batiste, 48, meeting Mark Murdoch. A four-yard loss on third and seven. A tough road early. They lost to Nebraska in the kickoff classic, hammered at LSU. They were to play Bama. That one got hurricaned out, if you will. And then a big lopsided loss up at Oklahoma State. Then they turned things around, Kevin, won five in a row after changing the offense. Well, I know a certain ESPN broadcaster that picked a and to be in a contention for the national title. The Nebraska game, he will shall remain nameless. The, the Nebraska game, they lost three people to injury and went downhill from there, but this is... Right side, Percy Waddle, 81. A high school All-American in Columbus, Texas, a few years ago. That's only his third catch of the year there. Richardson to Lewis. Inside the 40 of the Longhorns. Reverse Harris, who wants to throw. Wobbles it down the field. Receiver Shane Garrett trying to come back for the football. Mark Berry never did see that wobbly pass. He'll have the defense ready, and you'll see a lot of different things. Option right on third and four. Defender got in the way and took the football. The A&M Aggies have it, but they're back on their side of midfield. And a late punch or something there by Oscar Giles of Texas. Kittles, 95, hitting in an A&M player's helmet. Oh, that's, a, that's a, a tough penalty on the Longhorns. This is just an incredible play by Brockman, number 63. They say his motor runs 100 miles an hour. He takes the quarterback. He actually tipped that ball and was right in the middle of a bunch of people. Lewis gets the uh, recovery, but Brockman almost made that recovery, and then a very unfortunate penalty. Considering the situation, worst penalties we've seen this year by a player. There's Richardson cutting up field. Inside the 30, Lee Brockman, strong side linebacker, got him down. Bucky Richardson has nine rushing touchdowns this year. Richardson keeping straight ahead. And he's down inside the 10. Red Hager, as he's had to do so many times this year, tackling downfield. Backer can play well. Norris, or rather Lewis, left side, easily in for the score. Nice timing on the pitch by Bucky Richardson, and the Aggies are all over the Longhorns. There is a flag lying at the six-yard line. And it'll be holding on the offense. 32. We don't know who yet the, the hole was on, but watch 32 with the lead block. He just left the screen. You're going to pick him up in a minute on Bierman. He locks up on Bierman and drives him over the goal line. It's questionable whether or not the hole was on him. If it was, he may have had his hands open and on the shirt. Game. Riding the back of Paul Bierman with a spectacular grab. Well, that won't be a first down or a score, but it gets them a lot closer with third down coming up. Well, you wonder why Richardson's stats have improved. Here's one reason. 
Paul, Paul Bierman is, is getting a lot of attention in this game, and that's not bad defense. Tremendous play, actually. There's Richardson. Option left. It was contained well. Football is fumbled, and Texas appears to have it. That's Roger Fritcher with his first fumble recovery of the year. Good Hager made a big play. Kevin, they really can... No first downs for the Longhorns yet. That should have been one, but Tony Jones simply had it slip through his arms. So a bit of a late season slump here for number four, who caught one pass last week and a very catchable ball blown there. Would have been a first down. It'll be Rod Harris with good field position coming. Oh, nice kick. Way back at the 35. Did he outkick his coverage? Inside the 40 of Texas, the punter had to make the tackle. Osgood, a 6'1 junior from Moss Point, Mississippi. Gives it to Darren Lewis, and he might go! Out of bounds, just short of the line. The line. It is, it's a trap. See that? They come over and they trap number 67. Middle linebacker out of position, and then Lewis loose in the backfield, finally run down. That was an inside handoff by Osgood, crossing up the Texas defense. Again, they are shifting around back there, taking chances, and that one cost them. Up and over, Robert Wilson, the fullback, with his ninth touchdown of the year. But it was a 35-yard play a moment ago by Darren Lewis. Last year in high school, now running in touchdowns for Texas A&M. Replacement for Gurley, who was a big key in this game. This is, a, this is a power T formation. You can see all the people in the backfield. No mystery in this one. Right over McCall, the right tackle, and in. 14-0 A&M, and with that, in the ball and executed. Murdoch looking left side. Darren Norris, forget it. Up to meet him is Aaron Wallace, the outside linebacker. On the sideline, here's Chris Fowler. All right, guys, a and was a school of great traditions. And my favorite tradition is that when the Aggies score, all the Aggie fans get to turn and kiss their dates. All right, ready? Let's go. I love the tradition. The other part is, I don't have a date. I wonder if Bebo is free over here. <laughs> Bob, at least you've got Kevin up there. Yeah. <laughs> Second and 15. Ooh, almost intercepted by Mickey Washington. There's Metcalf with a little circle move to a draw play, and he's out over the 40. It won't be enough for a first down. Dana Batiste dropping from inside linebacker, trying to contain the Longhorns, who still are without a first down. Could be devastated with three quarters to go. the motion man in his own end zone up for grabs and there is Mike Jones 82 a junior tight end one of three they will use that's his first catch of the year as we get this frame underway on third and three off the hands of Rod Harris and it'll be a kicking situation for a &M. and speaking of Chris downstairs to Mr. Fowler okay Bob trainers are working on the left knee of Texas a &M quarterback Bucky Richardson right now behind me here they think he has a sprained knee. They're examining right now to find out if he can come back in the game, fellas. Little play action. Murdoch up the middle, wobbly pass, way down into the turf in front of Tony Jones. In the first three games. So that's 14 over seven games. Murdoch gives it to Metcalf. Circling outside and pulled down from behind. How's that for pursuit? Aaron Wallace, 6'4", 225, catching the speedy Eric Metcalf and Roper for a and number two, and Aaron Wallace is number three. Murdoch looking upfield on third down and has Tony Jones inside the 45 and out of bounds. 
the big play that Texas finally gets that it's been looking for. And the move at the same time by Tony Jones. He's only 5'7". As he catches it, a little, little limp leg there. Gets the defensive back and makes up for that drop pass earlier. He's a big play guy. They'll screen it on third and 15. They're trying to get Metcalf outside. He gets there, but pursuit from behind, Leon Cole, 74. Great pursuit, straight back down the field from the left end. And the Longhorns fail to move the chains. The wind, Bobby, is quartering left to right, a little bit in his face on this one. It is blocked by the Aggies. With the football is John Roper. Into the end zone is John Roper. the Blitz Brothers, number 23. On the inside, you have to close the inside man when you play that. Now, they blocked this thing on the dead run. Wallace never even left his feet. And Roper down the field. Two minutes and 16 seconds elapsed in the second quarter. Roper takes it in for a 21-0 lead. Too injured right now, and with that shoulder aggravated, Hopefully, we'll see Lee again here tonight. Murdoch to the near side for Kevin Nelson. Alex Morris from left corner with tight coverage. Need to recruit a quick, a fast running back to go with him and some receiver. They feel he has talent. Metcalf on third down. He has got the first down. Had to get over the 30. Made it by about a half yard where the official spots it. And Eric Metcalf, part of a... Texas team that is just really not a, a running power team at all. He came in with 880 yards. If he can reach 1,000 somehow tonight, he still has a bunch to go. He could join Earl Campbell, Roosevelt Leakes, and Chris Gilbert as Longhorns who have twice rushed for 1,000, but that will be awfully difficult tonight. Murdoch with time gets it to Metcalf who catches his 40th pass of the year. Three-yard gain, Metcalf with a deep give from the quarterback, and he improvises for good yardage out to near the 40. They have to get about two feet over the 40 for another first down. Donovan Forbes is the Texas quarterback on third and one. He's considered the number three man behind Murdoch and Shannon Kelly. Forbes a junior out of Baytown, Texas, and things falling apart on the snap. Dead ball, false start, offense, third down. Ooh, that one backfired. They put Forbes in there for his running ability. Murdoch is not real mobile. Play action to Metcalf, under pressure, Murdoch unloads it, and on the near side, a catch for a first down from the tight end, Stephen Clark. Blind side, just missing was Jeroy Robinson, but Dana Batiste got there. Good pressure from 97 Robinson, and then Batiste finished off the play. Start was against Texas Tech, and he had 16 tackles. Squirting through, fullback Robert Wilson. If I, if I'm by, you have Osgood in the game. If Richardson was in, I'd be looking for an option. Osgood's a passer. Rolling and throwing. Caught there and holding on Wilson. Nice catch with the hand and then holding it against the hip to keep control. 7.42 remaining, second quarter. Darren Lewis stepping inside one man. Over the middle, 81, Percy Waddle. 
flag on the play. More flags at the end of the play. Willie Mack Garza playing hurt tonight did not start. Sensibly. We have offsetting fouls. We have a face mask on the defense. We have illegal motion on the offense. The penalties will offset. We will replay the down. Right down the middle, Harris inside the 10, beating Mark Berry this time. Well, Chris Osgood started, and as I said, four games for the University of Mississippi in 1986. This is man coverage. Harris just beats Berry, and Osgood lays it out on a post pattern. Safety's not there. Again, Texas playing the run all the way. Use There's another audible. A fake to the belly of the fullback, and a touchdown for a and and the quarterback runs it pretty well. Here's Hager. He's the guy you would hope would be there. Richmond Webb pushes him off course. Fontenot, anytime you have two linemen double teaming a guy like that, he has no chance. The rest of the team has to cover up. Osgood audible on this play, and it turned out pretty well. Never thought about giving it to the fullback, took it up inside, and made it work. 5-0-1 left first half. The route is on. Aggies by 28. Bob, they say what makes this rivalry so intense is that the Aggies and the Longhorns have to share the state. Well, here we've got a Longhorn and an Aggie, Sheila and Tom Eversage, who have to share the same house. Tom, you told me it's a little bit nasty the week of the game. Well, we, us, we usually don't talk about two days before the game, and after tonight, I don't think we'll be talking for about a week. Sheila, he's done most of the talk in the past few years. Yes, he has. I'm sitting up there going, they score on it. But you have the right to kiss your date after a score. You haven't been doing that. Uh, no. I haven't gotten slapped yet. Okay, oh, thanks. <laughs> Back upstairs. Probably won't let him. Out to the left side, Tony Jones on that outside pass. And back into the game for Texas now is Mark Murdoch. He's 64 yards, and Chris Osgood, their backup quarterback, dove it in. Eric Metcalf slants left side. Nice move he made around Albert Jones, but all that does is slow him down a bit so that those Blitz brothers can find him. Good speed. That's professional speed, and it's quick. Real quick. Forbes is in at quarterback again. Optioning, pitching to Metcalf. And he is short, it appears, on third down. Alex Morris cracking up from left cornerback. Juniors, Bobby, you see that four juniors. There was a gap here in the Fred Akers last years. There was a lot of negative press, and some people felt that uh, he couldn't get the recruits that he needed because they didn't feel he was going to be here for a couple of years. So those last two classes, while they have some stars, they don't have any depth. On the snap, a fumble, and Texas with the football. Oscar Giles in on the play, 95. Players, a sophomore, it's a fumbled snap. Osgood never had it. And here comes Giles closing fast, and he finds a little present laying on the ground. 185 pounds. The College Station from the Big D. Murdoch to Tony Jones. That is inside the 10. Alex Morris left corner on the coverage. One of those players. Up over the top on third down. Oh, what a catch by Kerry Cash. Texas gets the score. Well, Derek Ritchie's close, but he's only 5'11", and he can't jump with Cash. And Murdoch is the key. I mean, that's a tremendous pass. If it's anywhere else, Ritchie has the coverage. He lays it in there perfectly. Big break for Texas. Here from behind Murdoch. This kid's played well. Look where this pass is. There's only one guy that can get it, and that's Cash. And the Longhorns continue their good percentage of those type passes for touchdowns this year. They list him at six foot, but he plays smaller than that because of his technique. It's on second and seven, the deep pitch to Lewis. Eludes one tackle, gets outside, and wrapping him up with Stanley Richard, the free safety. Gamble a bit. They've got a third and one, or do they just get their first down and run out the clock? Lewis has.
has it. James Patton, the freshman, spelling Warren Bolden at right tackle. 92 in on the stop. And the first half ends all Aggies. 28 to 7, though Texas did get a late turnover and turned it into a score. So it's 28-7 for Jackie Sherrill's Aggies. And downstairs, here's Chris Fowler. Okay, Bob, as we said, a lot going on on halftime right after this break. We'll show you the Texas A&M Band, one of the great bands in college football. And then a story on a football family that has a lot to be thankful for this holiday season and a portrait of a very courageous young man. It is in rushing and total yards. The first down started out 8 to nothing at one point. Now 14 to 4 in favor of the visiting team. Now, you might go back to the game and remember that Texas won the toss and deferred so the team... It'll come down at the nine to Eric Metcalf. He angles near side and fumbles the football. AM had a real shot at it, and the Aggies did not recover. Texas almost with a disaster. Now to move the football. Murdoch stumbling and completing it to the tight end, Stephen Clark. Field and sees thing, reads and reacts. Gives it to Metcalf. Outside, and he's chased down by Aaron Wallace. Metcalf in motion. Lateral pass. Great coverage by the Aggies. They were not fooled at all. Alex Morris, the left cornerback, number 30, led the charge outside left. 35 career sacks, did Roper. Murdoch airs it out. Too tall for 5'7", Tony Jones. One scoring-wise. They punted their first time and then went a long way. 70-plus for a score. Fumbled down deep, which kept them from going up 14-0. They did then on three plays. After kicking the football, they got a touchdown on 10 plays. Negative yardage on a fumble. Their other score, you remember, came on the block punt. That's how they got the 28. On third down, the Longhorns hold. Brett Hager, number 60, in the middle of things. 40. Metcalf and Samuels waiting. He's kicked it tonight twice for 41 yards in average. That one got down in a hurry rather low. Metcalf at his 45. Smacked as he crosses midfield. 1,000 yards on the year with his performance tonight. Metcalf nowhere to go, and then he slipped as he was running away from Adam Bob, the inside linebacker. Yep. Dion Cockrell in motion. Down the middle they go. This one is over the receiver, and Derek Ritchie intercepts, and we have a flag. Ritchie with his first INT of the year. Clipping by the team that intercepted the ball after the interception will be a 15-yard penalty in first and 10. <laughs> They fake the deep pitch. Osgood rolling and throwing. Intercepted, Mark Berry. He's their best pass coverage man and has his second pickoff of the year. Tremendous coverage and tremendous team defense. They pull Osgood up when he tried to make it reverse and Berry looks like the receiver. No interference right on the shoulder of the receiver. Look at the defense. They make Osgood throw it. He doesn't want to throw it. And Barry's sitting there. Man-to-man -man coverage. Great play. Dick. Stephen Clark is also out there. Metcalf outside, inside. And diving for another yard or two. Gary Jones finally gets him. Looking for him to double the outside. Looking that way. Slanted. Touchdown. Stephen Clark. You have Jones in the slot. The safety's gone. No help. Murdoch reads it perfectly. He's had a fine game. Jones makes the touchdown. We got a ball game here. Here from the side. That's Cash number 19. He's out of the picture. Murdoch knows it's double coverage. He never thinks about it. He goes to his big tight end out of the slot. Osgood rolling to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard or two. Open field effort by number 60, Britt Hager. 
A UT record tackle total of 187 last year. Going here. There's Darren Lewis, a good guy to start it with. First down for him, up the sidelines. And if he had his balance, he might have gone. Having a huge night. He's now up at 1,500 yards for the year. Time for Osgood, who airs it out. Intercepted! Willie Mac Garza! It's in high school, and this is perfect defense. Sitting inside the chest of the receiver, AM is not a passing team, and they have not been able to make it work tonight. Tremendous. But right now, it's Murdoch in control. Metcalf, nothing there. Aaron Wallace, 23, always seems to be around the ball carrier. Wallace pursuing from behind, ball delivered low. And it would have been a tough, tough catch for Kevin Nelson. Kevin, they still haven't moved the ball the length of the field for any kind of score. No, I don't think they will either because of the advantage, the physical advantage that AM has. But their game plan is working now. Their defense is playing better. They're getting the AM uh, offense off the field without major damage. And they're able to move a little bit offensively. That's what they need to do, and that's what they need to do here late in the third quarter. Aggies have good field position at their own 45. After is to Darren Lewis. Behind Fontenot and McCall, Darren Lewis, very close. You can see the marker at the top of your screen. Osgood tries to do it himself, and it all depends on the mark. They didn't make it. Oh, that's been the Longhorn game plan tonight. It's a good call. They rolled him, too. They bring him outside away from the rush. There really wasn't any rush. Stan Thomas on that side has done a remarkable job. Draw play, Metcalf. Outside. First down. Inside the 20. doing a super job but number two with a bad ankle and you said it Bobby there's not many running backs in the country that can do that on a bad ankle and that's why they give it Derek Metcalf he's the big play guy and Texas is is on their way to the goal line time taking over quick release intercepted and that will be Mickey Washington his momentum carried him into the end zone but the officials will spot it at the one had to unload it well not only that he'd been throwing it short he had pressure and he threw this one long now post pattern should never be thrown long like that and behind the receiver should be thrown in front of the receiver so especially a 5-7 he's the only one who could get it let's take a look at the spot there's the possession and steamrolling Stanley Richmond. Stanley might get credit for the tackle, but he's the one that got knocked down. Love that. First to 12. There he is. This time it's Darren Lewis with good yardage. Out over the 20. Lewis has the first down. He had to get to the 23. Straight ahead, Darren Lewis out over the 30. Backs him up. Horton is a pass receiver. Look out for a pass. Horton normally in there for receiving and the full house back. They needed to the 35 and a half. Maybe a foot short of the 36 for the first down. He said that a girl. Aaron Lewis. Osgood down the field to Percy Waddle. Now, where do they mark his forward motion? It appears like it's, it's going to depend on where they set the football down. He has less than the length of the football. This 
will be an easy pickup for Stanley Richard. He had the first down, but no football. Well, this is one of these deals where you try to hold the ball over, see? He started to stick the ball out and appeared to hit somebody's helmet. You can't advance it. Robert Wilson just came out. Came out. Screen and almost intercepted. Murdoch had to play defensive back to keep John Roper from catching the football. Early kick has kicked greatly since then. Averaging 49 per boot. Gets a good bounce here. Cut off by Rod Harris. Ooh, smacko at the 20-yard line. Lewis again, juking his way up the middle. And he set up third and short as well. Second half, A&M, no points, but 145 yards. Texas has seven points to go with those yards. And Lewis has the first down, angling left. Tex Mercer, number three, up from strong safety to get him. Darren Lewis outside, angling up the field. It's for that situation, third and four. No, sir. There's Roger Fritcher at left tackle. They're getting some good plays out of those rather inexperienced tackles. At the 20, Longhorns, first down. Left side, they try to get Metcalf out there against some folks. And Eric has a couple of yards before skating out of bounds. 25 left in the game. AM 28, Texas 14. Murdoch, long left side. And Tony Jones, he is gone. Good is 28 21. Bomb time with 9 15 remaining. Well, kudos to the offensive line. Time to get off a big pass. And Jones, he's not in there because he's 5'7", 140, because he's big. He's in there because he can run. And Murdoch over Mickey Washington, a perfect pass. That was team offense. Murdoch, the offensive line, and Tony Jones speed guts, and they put seven on the board. The ball carrier in the misdirection of Kenyon. Osgood, play action. Time to throw. Intercepted by Tex Mercer. For Chris Osgood, he's never been to Austin for this one when it was competitive, and he didn't see Mercer. He was trying to hit Waddle across the middle. Mercer sit back there, and Texas has field position. Murdoch, little out to Tony Jones. A&M bench calling it incomplete. Jones gets a reception from the officials. Which against his right five, because there were not two hands on the ball. Pressure. Murdoch unloads, and it's incomplete. A battle for the ball. Carry Cash against Derek Ritchie. Let's the call the 29-yarder for a 29-yarder, and it looks like he got it. Just inside the right upright, and with 7.32 remaining, it's now 24 unanswered Texas points. It's a four-point game as the hot rivalry continues. Lance Pavlis, a 6'2", 185 sophomore out of Tom Ball, Texas. The number one rated Texas quarterback out of high school is the signal caller now. And right up the middle goes Darren Lewis. Tex Mercer, Stanley Richard in on the stop with 212 on 35 totes with a touchdown. There he is again. Oh, look at that play by Oscar Giles. 95, took on a blocker and just pushed him into the ball carrier. Called 11. That's Rod Harris in motion. Deep, deep drop. Sack time! That's James Patton, a freshman. Here comes Patton on a twist. The left side of your screen. Fabulous never had a chance. Chalk that one up to just great defense. Get into such position. At the 
first down marker. It is a catch for Tony Jones. Tony Jones and Mark Murdoch keep making big plays. A quick out on second and 12. Tony Jones, the receiver. Derek Ritchie with a good open field tackle to avoid another Texas first down. It was at Texas Tech. He had a punt returner that was 130 Thurman. Tyrone Jones. Ty Thurman. No, Tyrone Thurman. Tyrone Thurman. There you go. He was a Smurf, they called him. Un AM 0 for 5 on third and long since halftime. And that will be short. Robert Wilson on a quick opener to the fullback. Big play. Murdoch. Right in between a couple of defenders. Tony Jones, the antenna receiver, and a sandwich between number one, Mickey Washington, and Gary Jones, number six. It looked like Washington had a legitimate shot at the football. Yeah, high school All-American. Up into the pocket, and a sack. Jeroy Robinson got in. is Keith Cash, the twin brother of Kerry, and that is a first down. Generally, you can beat him. The quarterback has got to be careful not to throw it to a dropping linebacker or a safety. Perfect pattern for a 16-yard gain. Left side, there's the tight end, Steven Jones, at the 33 of Texas. Got those tall receivers. That was a nice On second down, Murdoch trying to throw it left-handed. Looked like he had Eric Metcalf ahead of him. The Blitz brothers, Roper and Wallace, all over him. Uh-oh. Another sack. And there's that Alex Morris from left corner. Dude, they didn't block anybody. No Round Rock, Texas is probably a lot like some of those small towns we passed driving from College Station over to Austin today. on fourth and seven Aaron Wallace one of the Whip brothers does his thing to Mark Murdoch he's here in the last minute Darren Lewis of AM is our Casio player of the game a personal high of 211 on the night average five and a half per carry for 38 times I can't imagine the intensity of this rivalry unless you're here and of course the Texas seniors will leave without having beaten Oklahoma or AM now the clock runs out and AM wins it. 28 to 24. The Aggies will continue their season against Alabama next week on ESPN. 7 and 4, 6 and 1 in the Southwest Conference. Second best to Arkansas, the Cotton Bowl team. Texas will finish with its second losing season in the last three years. Would have anyway. Now with a record of 4 and 7. And it was Jackie Sherrill and David McWilliams with their clubs hooking up in a tight battle here tonight that lived up to our advanced billing as the battle of the state of Texas here this evening. For Kevin Kiley and Chris Fowler, I'm Bob Carpenter wishing you a happy Thanksgiving from Austin, Texas, where the Aggies were victorious tonight.